Africa rise up today. We are taking on Helsinki. Yes, a team that is from the Finnish league. What? But it is the only one from the rest of the world that I felt like would fit in into this project. So hopefully at the same time, we're making people from Finland happy and also the African community. Today, we are taking on League 2 and the whole of English football. Starting off at the bottom and going all the way to the top with African Youth Academy talents only. This right here is our starting squad that everything will begin with, but none of these players are going to be here by the end of this. We want to fill up the entire squad with players from the Youth Academy, specifically from Africa, obviously. But most importantly, we're going to be following a structure on this. We're going to respect the Africa Cup of Nations winners and the ones that have done extremely well by starting off with our search for talents with Ivory Coast and then working our way down to the semi-finalists and the quarter-finalists. You understand how this will be working out. So let's see how we can turn this team of Helsinki, a Finnish side, into one that can dominate world football with all these incredible African talents. I cannot wait to see how this team is going to turn out by the end of this video. And of course, we're going to be using our modding system to go ahead and scout in countries that might not even be part of the FIFA scouting system. And by the way, for these videos, as always, I am using the live editor mod from Aranaktu on Patreon, and I am using the cheat engine. Those are the only ones I use. Everyone keeps asking me. Once again, there's your answer. Oh, before we actually go anywhere, do we have any African talents in here in the Youth Academy? We do, but they're both very low rated, so forget about that. What we're going to be doing is, though, we're going to be signing a scout. How much money do we have? Three million. Okay, that might not be enough to sign the best of scouts, but maybe... Oh, there's a five-star, five-star one for 3.4 million. I'm going to sell on a couple of players to make sure we can sign that one. I want to start off by utilizing the 4-1-2-1-2 formation and hopefully sticking to it till the end, since this one doesn't have any center midfielders, which is like the hardest position to find talents in for some reason. I feel like this is the best one I can go for. I want to get two strikers, a center attack in mid, wingers, CDM, and then a four at the back formation. So I have just recently sold a couple of players and I was able to sign this scout, Kevin McGugan. He comes in with five star, five star, and we're going to be sending him out to, as I said before, the winners of the Africa Cup of Nations to begin with. And since it is Ivory Coast, I am going to be looking for strikers. Because I want my own Drogba. The first scout report is now here from McGugan, and it is absolutely trash. Wow, buddy. I was thinking you could do better than that. I'm not even going to sign anyone below 300k. Even though we have a low-rated team, I ain't starting off like that. But I'm very much looking forward to these guys hopefully having some crazy haircuts. Because as you know, I'm obsessed with that. If the first month ain't good, don't give up. Because you could get yourself a man named Thierry Diaby coming in a 1. 0.4 million. Yes, I'm excited about that one. Sadly, no one else was good in that one. This is the first scout player and, uh, you know, first scout report player. I'm not going to sign him. Actually, should I? Maybe as a backup. I'll sign him anyways. Worth 300k. Right after I say I'm not going to sign anyone for 300. There you go. We did it. But let me see what this guy's rating is instantly. He could move into the team. He's 17 years old, 62 rated Thierry Diaby with 81 pace. Not the best shooting, decent passing and dribbling on top of it. Do you have any play styles, buddy? Let me see them play styles. Why can't I see them? Let me sign him right now and check him out in the squad. The first to be signed for our team. By the way, we do have a man from uh, Africa already. Bande, this man from Burkina Faso is here for now. But ideally, I want to fill this team with Youth Academy talents at some point. Diaby comes in with that 62 Rapid and Trickster. Love that. Now, obviously, I won't be showing you guys all the talents that we find consistently, just the best ones from this point on. Otherwise, we'd be spending too much time in these scat reports. But this is the last one that I'm getting from the Ivory Coast. If I could get yet another striker here, that would be huge. But it looks like we're not going to get that. These guys are pretty low rated. So we'll be moving on to the next one. And I believe the next country, who was in the final? It was Ivory Coast against Nigeria. Ooh, I could get the next Aussie men. I could get the next Boniface. 
Why not? And off we go to the second month of scouting in Nigeria already. And we have found Dennis John, 5 foot 11 tall. And he comes in at the value of 1.6 million. One upping the one that we had from the Ivory Coast. Other than him, I don't actually think we have anyone else in here that I should be interested in. So I'm going to get rid of these guys off screen. But let me show you what this guy is about. Hopefully, he comes in with a decent rating. 62. I'll take that. That's the same rating as the other one. He has 76 pace. He probably could play in a different position. He even has good defending and dribbling there. So you can tell that this guy's actually quality at that. But I don't want him to be a defender. I need this man to be my second striker. So now we have a Nigerian and also a man from the Ivory Coast in those striking positions. Bande, I appreciate you, but I will get rid of you to give these guys as much playtime as possible and work on their shooting ASAP. I've just gone ahead and sold a couple more players, including the striker from Burkina Faso, and I was able to sign another scout. Two five-star, five-star scouts to look for talents in Africa right now. And the next two countries that we're going to are the ones that lost in the semi-finals. South Africa lost against Nigeria, and we have Congo who lost against the winners, Ivory Coast. In Congo, we're looking for a centre-back. In South Africa, we are looking for a goalkeeper hopefully strengthening that defense. We might have just found our goalkeeper instantly. I was going through the other scout report and then switched over to the South African one to find David Nkosi, six foot five, 1.8 million, the most expensive youth academy player we have found so far. And I cannot wait to put him into this squad because we do need a great goalkeeper. I also found a couple of other ones that I can show you right here that I signed as possible backups. But Nkosi comes in with a 64. Yep, you're the man. You're coming straight into the team. Development plan only takes 20 weeks. So hopefully we can get him to like at least that 65 rating by the end of the season. Huge potential in him. And some of these guys are going to be backups for our team that I'm just keeping on signing whenever I find them. I probably should put some development plans on these guys too. Let's not forget about that. Well, it would be wrong to go out without any talent from these countries. And we're starting off with Jules Bamba, who could potentially be a decent backup i'm just signing him anyways but the main reason i'm showing you this is salio gomez 1.2 million six foot three tall just join us right now pal and the last possibly the last scat report that i'm getting here from south africa which has been delivering so many great young goalkeepers to us i have too many by now but i'm gonna be ending those scat reports now and go to a different country up next but i do want to sign the center back that we just brought in 65 rated he's the highest rated one we found but the value isn't that high i think it's because defenders are worth less than the attackers and stuff right so possibly that could be the reason or maybe because he doesn't have 94 potential like the other ones but do we really care we're gonna turn him into a beast anyway so gummies you're gonna be joining us only nine weeks to go up in his rating as well which is gonna be fine for him to get another boost until the end of the season and we're going to be going ahead and putting him in straight away to play because these guys really suck so gummies you can play five star week for power header slide tackle good stuff that's the first season has come to an end and helsinki is on 74 points as we do qualify for the playoffs and in those playoffs we got up there we got into the, into the uh, semi-final we won the first game and then we got smacked. Yes, Colchester ruined us 3-0 in the second leg. And that led to us not getting through into the next round, not being able to get promoted and staying down here in League 2 for another season. But I'll be honest, it's probably for the better because this gives these players a lot more time to play against people on their level. And that's a good thing. And so far, we only found a goalkeeper. We have brought in two strikers. And that's it so actually no another center back of course but that's it yeah we need to find a lot more players in the upcoming season and go down the list of teams that took part in the africa cup of nations oh and of course let me show you the stats 10 and 7 from our center attacking midfielder 9 and 3 what's up with my strikers john 23 games 8 goals 1 assist diaby 34 games 
Okay, these boys really, really need work on their shooting. That is a glaring issue so far. They could have played like center back as well, and it shows. Starting off into the new season, I am sending out the first scout to look for defensive minded players because I still need center backs, full backs, a CDM, and I've sent the other one out to look for wingers because we are lacking a left midfielder and a right midfielder in this formation that can help these strikers score more goals. Here we are now with talents from Angola. Juvenal or Juvenal Alves is coming in and for 600k, but watch out. This is the best we ever found. Worth 2 million. Yes, 2 million, my friends, from Cap Verde. Left footed winger, hopefully. That is what I'm looking for. If he isn't the winger and he's like a center attacking mid, that's fine as well. But let's see these new players walk into our team. Where are they? Cardoso. Okay, he comes in with a 63 rating right now. Then it is Semedo Fernandez. He is 64 rated left mid. Cardoso could turn into a right mid. And we have sol solved the situation. Not solved. Solved the situation. And this is another one. I don't know if I've shown you it. But I did find this guy in the Youth Academy as well. So we could have two players from Cap Verde occupying the winger positions. And I am completely open to that. Let's freaking do it. But let's turn him into a right midfielder. Which is going to take him 28 weeks. Oh my god. Might as well play him as a left wing then. Uh, this guy, it takes him 14 weeks to get attacking work rate on high. That is something I would like to have as well. But both of them are going to be promoted. Both of them are going to get playtime. And the same goes for the man from Angola. He's going to go straight into the lineup as a left back in our team. Let's improve that weak foot and get you in there as well, pal. So really, really good scout reports coming in. Having a big impact on our team. So on the left, Hernandez. On the right, we're going to have Cardoso. And in left back, we're going to have Palas Alves. That's the one. We're looking at the last guy report coming in from Cap Verde, and it just doesn't stop. Take a look at this. Semedo Martins, 400k. Obviously not that special, but this right here. Evaldo Ferreira, 1.4 million. Kennedy Duarte, 1.4 million. And then this man for 700k on top of it. And we also have the last scout report coming in from Angola. And it seems like it doesn't actually include any good players. So I'm just going to skip through that. And we're going to send our scout out very soon once again. But in the academy, I want to see the ratings of these guys. 65 rated left winger with absolutely no pace. I think this man has to go into the camp position. 14 weeks. I'm going to turn him into a camp because he does have very good dribbling and passing. Now we're looking at Lopez, who also doesn't have that much pace. Then we have Duarte, who is a center forward. Ah, oh, mate. How many weeks does it take for him to become a camp? Only two. Okay, so it seems like our entire attack, apart from the strikers, are going to be built from players from Cap Verde. Up next, we're going to the right side here, and we see that Mali is another team that we need to take up, or another nation that we need to take up with the scouting, and Guinea. So... Those countries are the ones that we have chosen. Physically strong CDM in Guinea. And then in Mali, we're looking for a physically strong center back to fill up the starting 11. Months of scouting in Mali and Guinea have paid off. We have found a CDM with an amazing haircut from Guinea coming in. Musa Leye is joining us straight away and we will be taking his stats to the next level. There we go. And we're also going to be bringing in this man, Balid Hassan, 68 rated. Lads, this guy was the most valuable one. I don't think I pressed record when I found him, so I'm doing all of this again just in case. But Valid Hassan coming in at a 68 and his value was around like 2.8 million or something. So I am madly excited to welcome that man into the team. Here we go with that signing and also the uh, position change for Duarte right here. Yes, he goes up. We are now looking at a team that is filled with players from the Youth Academy, except I believe I forgot the right back position, right? Yeah, I did. So that sucks. But Hassan, you're not supposed to be in that position, buddy. You're supposed to be right there. And then this man is supposed to be replaced with... Wait, what? Did I just... Did I just kick him out the team? Please don't tell me I actually got... Okay. Oh, mate. For a second, I thought I actually released him from the team for no reason. Uh, but here he comes. 62 rated. That is fine. Oh, 
is way higher rated at center back. And Hassan can play CDM, and he does have better shooting passing. Okay, we're going to swap these two around. Hassan goes center back. Leia goes into center. Uh, is Hassan goes CDM. This man goes into center back. And that way, I believe everyone will be happy. And, of course, the new center attacking midfielder of the team, Duarte, comes in to fulfill the triangle of Cup Verdian players in those positions. So I love that. Ivory Coast and Nigeria up top. Cup Verde in these positions. In the right, right back position, we still need, need to make a contribution. But then at center back, we will have Guinea. At CDM, it will be Mali. At uh, the, the other center back position, it will be Congo in goal, South Africa. And on the left hand side, Angola. It's going good. That's his name is Alpha. He goes straight into the team. 1.8 million. Yes, that's his value. I sent out my scouts to look for players in Cameroon and Morocco. Those are the next ones in the line. And we have found some really interesting players. Two of them being right backs, which I obviously was looking for. But we're looking at... Okay, so Ferreira still hasn't turned into a right back. 65 and 64 rated. There is going to be a battle for that position. Alpha is going to be the one taking over straight away. 12 weeks uh, for him to go up in his rating, promoted, promoted into the senior team. And if this guy takes oh a short amount of time to go up, he might be able to compete for that spot, you know. So we now have found two really good uh, fullbacks. And uh, we also have filled the backup position, which really excites me because we can now get rid of that man and then the bench is slowly being filled with a bunch of the youth academy players as well if i'm not mistaken so that's a really good thing as well so let's get it on this team is fully ready i don't know why gomez is very unhappy he has been playing every single game even if he requests a transfer you ain't going nowhere, pal. The season is now over, and once again, we made it into the playoffs. I actually thought we would make it into the top three, but that's... It did work out. Yes, it did. Helsinki is going up into League One. No more League Two for us. Let's take a look into the stats of our players and see the potential in them. What kind of numbers are they putting up? John coming up with 34 and 2. Diaby with 22 and 9. Fernandez 8 and 8 on the left hand side. Hassan as a CDM with 7 goals and 2 assists. This right back ain't playing no more. Don't you worry. Gomez with 4 goals and 3 assists from centre back. Very impressive. And this Musa Sisei lad has been taking a little bit of play time away from people as well. Which is a good thing I guess. And our left back has 7 assists. Our right midfielder has 11 assists. This team is working together nicely already. And I cannot wait to see them in the Prem. So... Let's start off, though, with our journey in League One. I like the number 100, do you? Well, let me give it to you. 100 points. First place for Helsinki. The African Wonder Kids are taking over English football step by step. League Two, we done that. League One, we finished it. Now we're going up into championship football, and that is going to be a big test because, let me be honest with you, I like this team. I love it. I love what we have built up here. Uh, but I do believe in the championship with teams coming down from Premier League football and stuff. I don't think we're going to get direct promotion. If we do that, I'd be extremely satisfied with it. But I think there might be two seasons on the horizon in the championship. Having said that, let's take a look at the stats right here. 33 and 10 from our very own Drogba. Diaby is doing well. John with 19 and 3. Hassan again from CDM, just taking so much part in that attacking play of our game. And then we have the wingers doing a good job too. Anyone with an immense amount of assists? Oh, by the way, the Moroccan has taken over the right back position. Yes, Idris Said is now the right back. It's not Alpha. He's actually two ratings above him by now. And play styles wise, let's go through all of them here. Duarte has a bunch of them. Wow, I love that. Fernandez has only one, Cardoso has only one, Hassan only one, and then our center backs actually have a couple there, which is impressive. Left back, whip pass, right back, nothing, and Kosi far throw and rush out. Okay, buddy. That is how the team is looking. Ratings wise, the lowest one is Cardoso with a 71 alongside Said, but that is okay. Good enough for championship football, at least in terms of like not going back down again. I'm sad to disappoint, but we didn't get first in a championship. 
we got second. Helsinki with 90 points going straight up into Premier League football. Something that I didn't expect. I thought, yes, top six playoffs. Let's see how it goes. But seeing the teams that have come down from the Premier League, we're looking at Fulham, Sheffield, Watford, former Premier League side, obviously. Sunderland is in that sixth position. I'm impressed. Anyone else here, former Premier League? I mean, obviously, a lot of these guys have played in the Premier League before, but I'm not seeing any massive names in there, you know? no, None of this Everton or Leeds United type of teams, even Leicester, they seem to be in the Premier League right now. They might come down next season as we go up, but do we care? Not really, because we have a ridiculous team. The lowest rated player in the team is not our right back anymore. It is our right midfielder who actually is getting replaced by Ferreira now, who is uh, on a higher rating. I'm okay with that. And uh, 76 is the lowest rating we have in the squad right now with 283 rated strikers who clearly know how to shoot now. Duarte needs to work on his shooting. The rest of his game is quality. Fernandez, Ferreira, these guys look solid. Hassan has obviously been unreal for us. The man with the biggest haircut in the team is the one with the captain's armband as we speak. Same rating as the other center back as well. Our goalkeeper is on an 81. And I gotta admit... I don't think I've been paying too much attention to team strategy. Ah, oh, mate, I completely forgot about this. Ah, oh, the team could have grown even faster. I'm sorry about this. I mean, our strikers are doing well. Let's go ahead and boost up our defense a little bit more if we can. Another four-star coach coming in right then and there. So next season, I'll be able to bring in another one and improve the growth of the team even more. And stats-wise, we need to see who has helped us get that Premier League football. It is John Diaby Pereira. Yeah, he deserves that spot. 15 goals, 11 assists. That man has played a massive role in our promotion into Premier League football. First season in the Prem is over and Helsinki is in that 51 point mark and in the 10th position. So that's that's not bad at all. I'm actually very happy about that. I'm actually also quite satisfied with the matter that we aren't immediately in European football, giving us a little bit of room to keep on improving before we get there. Because some of our players, as our strikers, are world-class. The same for our centre-back, our CDM, our goalkeeper. But some others need catching up. Specifically, Duarte. What's up with you, pal? You've been stuck on that rating for a little while. Hopefully he had a good season so he can grow a little bit more this time around. Let me see. Has he been growing at all, Duarte? As a, oh, okay, he's gone up by plus three. He's an exciting prospect. That's good to know, at least. Uh, let me see the numbers. Numbers, 22 for Diaby, 18 for John in his first season of the Prem. That's good. Our centre-back scores five goals. I assume that is from the set pieces. Duarte, one goal, three assists. Not that great. Buddy, I need you to step up. I really, really need you to do that. Okay, you remember how we finished like far outside the top four last time? Well, it's different this time. We got first. <laughs> Helsinki is in first place. Now, I don't think this is going to be the norm. I wouldn't say this is something that we're going to get done next season again. But 79 points was enough to go ahead and win it. With seven losses and seven draws, we were able to win the Premier League title. Which, again, I can't believe it happened this season already. I was kind of hoping like fifth place, maybe sixth, get some Conference League football, something like that. But this is huge. We are now looking at two attackers who are carrying this team, I would assume. Duarte, because he was an exciting prospect, has still managed to grow quite a bit. I heavily focused on his shooting, which was trash. And then we have Fernandes on an 87, Ferreira 84. The other one is on an 81. Okay, Saeed on an 85. Ferreira is the lowest rated player in the team now, which is fine. I mean, this team is Champions League level at this stage. So winning the Premier League maybe shouldn't really surprise me as much as it has right there. But let's go ahead and take a look into the stats of these boys. Diaby 27 and 3. John 26 and 5. Ferreira with 22 assists. Yeah, this boy is having a good time. Next season is definitely growing a lot. Fernandez with 8 and 9. Not bad at all. Duarte, 8 goals this time. That's not bad. That's an improvement. Just cruising past Sporting to now beat PSG. Very close battle there. We beat West Ham in the cup. We are beating Real Sociedad in the semi-finals of Champions League football. And we're playing against Chelsea in the cup final to then play AS Roma in the Champions League final. Now, in my last rebuild, if you haven't seen it, don't listen to what I'm about to say. One, 
two, three. I lost the Champions League final, so I really desperately want to go ahead and win this one. But the cup final here, is there a chance for a treble for Helsinki and the Africans in our team? Let's get it. Here we go. Oh my God, look at that team. That team has to win it. That team has to beat Chelsea. Yes, it does. Duarte twice. Let's go. Oh, three times. He scores a hat-trick. Oh, mate. The story of Duarte is now incredible. The man couldn't score a goal to save his life. And now he's scoring a hat-trick in a cup final. That's what you want to see. Let me go ahead and see the team of AS Roma, though, before we take a closer look into the final uh, into the final squad that we will be having at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and see AS Roma with Gonzalo Ramos, Rodriguez, Rabio, Alex Garcia, Gavi, Zalewski, Cristant, Konate, Mike Marmol, no, sorry, Mika Marmol, Livramento, and Jonas Ubi. Interesting team. It doesn't scare me, which is why it should scare me. That's how it always goes. So let's go ahead and take a look into the standings. Is there a chance for a treble? We have won the FA Cup, obviously. Carabao Cup? No, we didn't win that one. Premier League? No, second. It's fine. We won the Premier League title last season. Manchester City, you can have it. I don't mind. We're in the Champions League final right now. And that is what we want, as we have already claimed the throne in the Premier League. Diaby, 38-3. and three. John with the 27-2. and two. Ferreira again with... Didn't he have 17-22 and 22 last season as well? That is really odd. 17 goals and 9 assists for Duarte. Let's go, buddy. Fernandez on the left now, stepping up as well. 11 and 16. And then you look at our centre-backs getting involved with assists. Our CDM still doing a good job. Not scoring as many, but assisting a couple. So, at the end of this, guys, we're looking at an incredibly strong team filled with players from Africa. And I am proud of it. I cannot wait to see how these guys play. One thing I realized, by the way, Said, the right back, actually has five-star skills. So that's going to be fun. The back line, he's the only one with more than three stars. So that's something to keep in mind. The rest of the team, I hopefully trained to have five-star, five-star on all of them. Yes, that's what I've done. And they should have play-style pluses now. John, technical plus. Rapid plus on Diaby. Duarte, nothing. He has, just has a bunch of play-styles. And on this finesse shot. Ooh, maybe. Maybe I can pull that off. Finesse shot used to be so amazing, but yeah, I haven't used it that many times lately. Uh, Ferreira, Trickster Plus, that's great as well. And then Flair Plus for a centre-back. Power header for Gomez. Whipped pass for Alves. He should be on the corners, and that man should be at the end of them. Let's dive into this Champions League final. Diving into this Champions League final, I'm actually so excited to finally use these players in the match itself. Years it has taken us to get to this stage from the bottom of League 2 to the top of European football. Said, big steal. Go on then, right back. This is pretty much Hakimi with the five-star skill moves. That's what he is. Said wants to go all the... Oh, okay. Buddy... Don't ever shoot again. Yes, finally, man. After like what felt like six corners back to back, we finally have possession. Captain moving the ball. Nowhere, sadly. Oh, God. I made a huge mistake there. 1-0. I was looking at the radar and I saw people running on the top left, but that was definitely the wrong decision to make to play such a risky pass and build up. And also doing that with my centre-back completely out of position. That's exactly where he would have been. Ah, oh, mate. 1-0 down already. I told you. I should be scared of these teams. Off we go. whoop -ah! oh, oh, let's go. That's what we love to see. Here goes Diaby. Drogba! No, that didn't work out. That's a good ball. That's a really good ball. Oh, my God. Don't tell me he scores again. Shoot, save, because that was a well-placed header. How do they always make this happen? Go on. Nice. Move it. Nice. Go on. Duarte, our center attacking midfielder, with a beautiful pass. Crossbar. You've got to be kidding. I need to be better. Nice. Duarte sees the run of John. John does it better. Our Nigerian striker. Gets the equalizer. Diaby, watch and learn, buddy. That's how you need to do it. You need to have composure in situations like that. Diaby so far feels like Darwin Nunez back in the day when he was just hectic 
not getting things done. But this is how we need it to be. 1-1. One, one. We're back into it. Let's do it. Let's see if we're good in the air. Let's lob this in. Diaby, why is my striker on the corner? That's why. Because we nearly freaking scored from it. I have to sneeze. I still have to sneeze. It just doesn't go away. I think it's gone. Let's go and attack. Here we go. Duarte. John, make a run for me. Duarte, beautiful pass. Back into Diaby. Duarte again. John again. Into Diaby. He goes for it. And he hits a crossbar again. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, I knew it. I knew I could win that. Cross coming in towards Duarte. And he tries it again. Lads, I've been having too many chances. They're going to win this. I feel it already. Nice. Our captain steps up there. Gets us the ball. And there's a run from Said that I'm seeing. Said getting involved. Sees the run of Ferreira. Ferreira cuts in. John helps us here. And there's the finish to make it 2-1. From the right-hand side of the pitch. All the way down the left. It is Fernandez, the left midfielder, scoring possibly the winner for Helsinki and the African Youth Academy. Let's freaking go. Take a look at that once again. Diaby going ahead and stumbling up that defender. That was very important. Otherwise, he could have possibly tackled me out of my uh, out of my chance there. Livramento. Late into the game. Our number two gets things done and then loses the ball. Here's the captain stepping up and we are not able to get to the freaking ball. It's 2-2, 86th minute. Gavi scores. Come on, man. Really? <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Watch this. Whoppa. Oh, I didn't do any skill move. Cool. Whoa. What the hell, bro? Gavi, relax. Gavi, relax. Relax, bro. I'm doing second man press until I need to step in myself and save the team. What a pass from out the defense that was. Here goes John sprinting away. Our Nigerian striker could do this. Go on then, John. Far post. See him. Why doesn't it switch to Diaby earlier? Go on then. That's it. You're kidding. I just hit that straight onto the keeper. We could have avoided penalties, but no. Possibly. That is going to lead to us actually running into penalties unless Duarte can do a madness and square it. It's done. 120th minute. John steps in once more. Yes. Let's go. Africa has conquered European football. Get in there. To the credit of Diaby, he was the one that played the back heel for Duarte to keep running through. So... At least at the end of this, he has done something as well. And the ref blows the whistle. Roma is beaten. The African Wonder Kids are about to lift that title. And the captain, who sadly led to us going ahead and uh, conceding the first goal, is now ending up lifting the trophy. After that, he actually had some crucial tackles. So no disrespect. We are lifting that trophy. And... We are making it known that African football is here to stay. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Hopefully, I'll see you on the next video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, catch you next time. Take care and peace.